Powers and Roots, Squares, Cubes and Roots with Adam Mash Tutor. Here are the beginner questions, some of the easiest types of questions that you're likely to see in an exam. We need to find 5 to the power of 2. This is pronounced as 5 squared. The square of a number is the product of a number with itself. For example, the square of 5 would be 5 times 5, which is equal to 25, and therefore 25 is a square number. Next, we need to find 10 to the power of 3. This can be pronounced as 10 cubed. Cube numbers are the product of a number with itself and then itself again. For example, 10 cubed is 10 times 10 times 10, which is a thousand, and therefore a thousand would be a cube number. For the third question, we have a square root symbol. So this is pronounced as the square root of 64. Roots are the inverse or the opposite operation. For example, the square root of 64 would be the number it multiplies with itself to give 64. And that number would be 8. So therefore, the square root of 64 is 8. Lastly, we have a root symbol, but we also have a little 3 to the left-hand side of it. This is pronounced as the cube root of 8. And this would be the number that multiplies with itself and then itself again to give us 8. In this case, 2 times 2 times 2 would give us 8. So the cube root of 8 is 2. On to the intermediate, slight increase in difficulty. These are most similar to the types of questions you'd be likely to see in an exam. The first question, we have negative 4 squared. Notice how negative 4 is inside the bracket. So that means everything inside the bracket is being multiplied by itself, which would be negative 4 multiplied by negative 4. When you multiply a negative by a negative, we end up with a positive. So 16. For the next one, very similar, but we have negative 4 multiplied by negative 4 and then multiplied by negative 4 again. We already know that negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So we just need to multiply this by negative 4 again. 16 times 4 is 64 and it will switch it back to a negative, so negative 64. Next, we're looking for the cube root of negative 64. So what do we multiply by itself and then itself again to give us negative 64? Well, actually, this is just the inverse of the question before. We're going to need to do a negative multiplied by a negative multiplied by a negative to end up with negative overall. And then 4 times 4 times 4 would give us 64. So the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Lastly, we need to estimate root 20. Notice the use of the word estimate. They're not looking for you to find the exact answer here. We just need a rough answer with a few things to watch out for that you're not allowed to write down. To do this, we'll need to look at the roots of the square numbers that we know are either side of 20. So the square numbers that are either side of 20 are 16 and 25. And if we square root these, that gives us 4 and 5. So we know that our answer needs to lie somewhere in between 4 and 5. And you can just pick a value or a decimal based roughly on how far through 20 is compared to 16 and 25. For me, it looks just under halfway. So I think a good estimate would be 4.4. But in an exam, the mark scheme will allow you to write down any number which is in between 4 and 5 you're just not allowed to write down 4 or 5 themselves. Lastly, onto the advanced questions. These are most similar to the types of questions that would be the more difficult ones in an exam. Notice with the first one, the negative 6 is not in a bracket. Therefore, we won't be squaring negative 6. With this question, we actually need to use bid mass and do the indices first. So we first need to work out what 6 squared is. And then this would be the negative of that. So this one would actually be negative 36. Next, the negative 1 is inside a bracket. So it will be negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And then multiplying this by negative 1 again, we'll switch it back to a negative, but remain as 1. For the next question, we're looking for a number that's multiplied by itself to give us negative 49. Now, at first glance, some of you might think, well, actually, the only way to get a negative number is for one of the numbers to be negative. So you might think something like 7 and negative 7. And even though the numerical parts of these are the same, they don't have the same sign. 
so these are not the same and actually if you type this into your calculator it will come up with a math error meaning that the solution is undefined there is no answer and lastly we're looking for a number that can be multiplied by itself and then itself again to give us negative 8000 the way we would get the negative 8 part is by having negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 but to get 8000 it must have meant that these were 20 instead to give us the three zeros at the end when multiplied by each other so the cube root of negative 8000 is negative 20. before you go have a look at the solutions that i've provided for some questions similar to those in the intermediate section i appear to have made some mistakes see if you can identify them and tell me what they are or make some corrections in the comments below Thanks for watching. If you found that video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment. If you're struggling with maths or finding topics difficult, you can subscribe and turn on notifications to receive regular updates about new video tutorials. Don't forget to visit my website adammathstutor.com for a full searchable list of all topics with exams, questions and solutions. You can also visit me on social media using the handle at adammathstutor on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. All links in the description below.